Like and subscribe. Peace out. Is a full new era coming? Is there something about this song yeah. that you're like, this is the one I want to show people what's happening? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to come out of the gates with something that would just like be really fun live because um, mainly because of this show, like well, what Splendor was supposed to be. I wanted to like come out with a song that would just like, is perfect for Splendor and made for a festival. And uh, yeah, I, I wrote the song with uh, Sammy Witty and uh, Emma Rosen and we uh, just wanted to make a song that was like, yeah, you could jump to like fast in the end. Uh, you know, it's it's quick, it's short, it's snappy. And uh, yeah, it's just a bit of fun because I, I, I really have a bit of fun when I'm writing. I usually am trying to get too deep and try and make some like depressing emo stuff and the lyrics are still pretty sad. Like the song is about, um, you know, a friend of yours or someone that's close to you or <laughs> close to me uh, who just keeps messing it up for themselves and is like, who's in an unhealthy direction and you kind of try and to tell them that, you know, what they're doing isn't good for them and whether they think that they've thought it through or, you know, you, you, you're trying to tell them that I'm rooting for you. Like I want you to work out. I want this to work out for you, but what you're doing is not right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. That's as, as vague I want to put it. <laughs> I like that. Because if I go too specific, I'm going to give away my whole life story. But no, uh, you really came onto the scene quite young and it's been a couple of years and there's so much growth that just happens as a human being in that yeah. time. Is there anything you've noticed with yourself in terms of how you've been making these new songs you've been writing? Like you've written, what, like over a hundred, I think, in the last couple of years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I started writing the album, legit, like start of 2020 and... Uh, Wrote around a hundred songs from the start of that. I was like in this really weird place where I, I was felt like I was getting better at writing, but I still didn't have really have any certainty of what I wanted to make. I knew I was like good at melodies and stuff like that, but I I still needed a lot of help because I wanted to make it great. I wanted to make it like sound like a professional song, which I didn't really have the skills because I was just still a bit too inexperienced. But then yeah, when COVID came along, I just honed in on. on all my skills and try to write a bunch of it. And I, I felt like myself was getting a bit, bit, a lot better at it. And, uh, especially when like these last songs that I wrote for the album, like the last guess, 30, which is the majority of, um, what's going to be on the track list. I was like, just really certain about, I felt finally like a huge ownership over it all because a lot of it was just more me than anything. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it felt, I felt a lot more closer to it. And, um, yeah, these I'm really, really excited about this, like more so than any other project I've done. Well, clearly because it's like a debut album, but yeah. and, and every artist is going to say that with their last release. <laughs> yeah. but I'm, I'm not lying. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of interesting. You, you say that because I think a lot of people might look at someone like as successful as you and kind of think that you just start being good. But like you hear about that with every creative thing, it's like it's that journey that you've got to go on to make it sound the same as it does in your head as it does out the oh speakers, yeah yeah right? exactly you, you can't like shortcut that no no it's it's it was incredibly frustrating i remember like as soon as COVID came around like i made a little makeshift studio in my house and like downloaded logic got myself a little midi keyboard on my and just like i was like i'm gonna do this like like properly i'm not like i was always so lucky like when i was so young you know things started to go well and i could go into these amazing studios with these amazing producers. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big time guy. And, you know, <laughs> but I wasn't like, you know, I was, I was still, I'm not, I was still so inexperienced. And now I was like going in just, you know, having the bare minimum. And uh, yeah, it felt like I, I was bad. When I went in, I was like, I cannot really write a full song by myself that I like because all the ideas in my head, like I'm, it's not sounding how it should. And then, and then occasionally I just got better and better and better. And then it, and I became more confident and, now, like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I feel a lot more confident in my skills. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and I wonder how much I can ask you, but I'm hearing you say album. Yes. What can we say? Yeah, that, that I mean, well, exciting. this is this is officially the debut out, uh, the debut single of the uh, of the album. Um, the debut album too. Debut album, debut single. It's all debuts. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm I've been working on this for like so long. It's like kind of feels like this thing that I still can't really touch yet. But uh, it's shaping up faster than ever because it was just so slow in COVID. Like I wrote so many songs. And I just didn't really have any direction. And I was like, yeah, I've got a full album worth of songs because I've written 10 songs. But I was like, no, like I can beat all of these tenfold. Yeah. When I hit the 100 mark, I was like, shit, I got I to gotta stop picking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got to start actually doing some proper work. Um, 
because yeah, the writing's just the fun bit. But uh, yeah, now I'm now I'm definitely feeling like it's shaping up a lot quicker. I've got like a track list, but it's still like not finished, which is annoying. A couple of decisions <laughs> still to make. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, just you know, production, mixing, mastering, all that yeah. shit to go. But all the writing is finished, and you know, got the songs that I'm happy with. How do you feel about the concept? Of an album, because I I feel like the big criticism at the moment with like the the upcoming generation of of music is that it's you know everyone's obsessed with TikTok numbers and everyone mm. wants the short viral yeah, hit yeah, yeah. and no one listens front to back to an album and then here you are you sound quite excited to have a debut like album rather than like a little EP or anything so yeah I mean like I've done three EPs I've done I've like I've done it and I always just want to do something. I, I I didn't want to do another EP. <laughs> like it, I feel like it's got. A, I could have and might have been more successful than this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, might have got a TikTok, but hey, no. Uh, do you care about like? Do you listen front to back to stuff? Oh yeah, I mean like I feel like all my fa- like all my favorite artists. I would like if if on New Music Friday, like yeah, I'll like flip through the first thirty seconds of most tracks. But like if one of my favorite artists puts out something, I'm like. Kind of have to go in a room by yourself, put your best headphones on, and just like close your eyes and delve into it because that's how you know that's how it's meant to be listened to. Yeah, I respect that. The headphones in the room, and that's like that's a whole meditative experience almost. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be like a I don't know if for those (laughs) for those deeper like artists that mean more to you, you kind of want to feel close to them. That's the way. If you just kind of close your eyes, you just like pretend they're talking to you, and that's what I'm trying to do with this this whole thing. Well, I feel like the good thing is you can know that I reckon there's plenty of rural fans that do show the work, that kind of detail. Like I remember I saw it firsthand. I was um, hosting like the first quarter of the hottest 100 of the decade. And I think yeah. you had three in total. I think two <laughs> I was, of them were in my shift. And I'm here being like, oh my God, this came out like last year. Was, that what was so hell? funny. <laughs> People were so mad. I was like, dude, I know. I know this isn't the best like what a hundred of the decade like i'm well aware that there's been better songs than days are confused in the past 10 years but i don't have control over this like my fans it's a vote it's a vote like i don't know i feel like also most most people's fans didn't really know what it was because it's not as obviously advertised as hottest 100 and then (laughs) my fans are just like yeah let's get him in there people like what (laughs) this is better than whatever i don't know What's a what's an amazing song? Any other any other Tame Impala song? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but I, it's it's got to be. Uh, it's a nice confidence. No, it was it was it was, it was it was it was it definitely made me feel good. Yeah, but, uh, it was more funny to me. I was like, well, yeah. this is good. I wonder how um you were saying you know you you're um kind of now in a stage where you can have a bit more ownership of like the whole process of making a song like yeah, from start yeah. to finish so has that changed the way i know you're still working with the og m phases oh yeah and and he was for people that don't know M-Fizzle. like the guy Baldy. that that really when you were first i think our first time meeting you was you jumped in on a like a version where he was in this room in this exact room in this room we're in right now i was standing right there and we sung jack garrett weathered and then we did golden years and yeah that was like the first time i was ever like on camera or ever did anything and that was yeah so this room is yeah quite emotional so <laughs> has it changed i suppose your relationship working with a guy that's known you since like you said the days where you didn't really know 100 percent how to make what you wanted to make happen and yeah i mean like it's such a now kind of telepathic relationship like he just knows exactly what i like and and I know, I know what he likes to write as well and like what he feels inspired by because that's really important. I want him to feel as inspired by the music as I do because like I could give him a song that he hates and ask him to produce it and he'd do it, but it will never be as good. <laughs> like, um, So yeah, it's definitely, it's like it's like a family now. Like I see like he's, he's like a, I can't tell if he's like an uncle or like a older brother-in-law or like a, like a distant cousin. Like, I don't know. He's like one of like those family members. <laughs> I don't know which one it is, but like, I mean, I've known him since I was 12 now and we've worked like so often together. And I know you've been also like working on some skills. You've been playing piano on stage. Well, piano was like the first instrument that I tried to learn when I was like five or six and I hated it. Like I thought it was so boring and upsetting, but I feel like most kids feel that when they try and learn the first instrument when they're that young yeah. but uh i ended up going back to it in covid and i was like oh this is kind of fun 
like try and learn some more chord progressions and just like actually like I no one taught me I'm definitely playing like my my keyboard player Bo like just looks at me with disgust every time I like try to play the keys because it's just all like, your this finger is techniques so, yeah like, everything yeah. all the technique is so wrong and he's classically trained so I'm sure he's like oh, just let me play it <laughs> playing guitar is like a lot easier for me also because I've been playing it for longer but you can kind of mute your strings if you're about to fuck something up ah uh. and then with piano if you hit the wrong note it is like it is so apparent like it is so apparent there's no way to shield it and that like really scared me and that was a few times i was just like oh like, it was, yeah anyway um have you seen the videos floating around of people uh using like youtube outro music to just like exit um situations there's people that will be like at the mcdonald's drive through yeah and, you know, oh they're like thanks for everything yes like, see you that next time. fucking video made me absolutely <laughs> cackle well that was so good at the drive through and he was like yo i appreciate you and i'll see you like bang, 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 bang. Yeah, oh. yeah 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 i have some outro music oh hell yeah if you would like to <laughs> be like you know all right guys so it's been it's been a pleasure <laughs> I'm, I'm out and then you can literally Walk out, and if you you just have to time it right. Do you want to hear the? Yeah, yeah. Let me hear one of the outro music. I've got two <laughs> options for you. There's like a real obnoxious version, <laughs> and there's like a chill version. <laughs> this is great. All what right, a relevant so meme. I love it. Here we go. This is this is option one. <laughs> it must be hard to keep up with the relevant memes. <laughs> <laughs> And that's when you exit, right? Okay, so okay. Option one. Hold up. <laughs> option two. Oh, so these are such classics. You know how much of a throwback <laughs> this is? I remember being in like 2016 watching like Sidemen videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like them being like packing like something or someone on FIFA and that song would play and I'd feel just like at my absolute happiest and this is taking me back then so i'd love to do this yeah one is the one that actually i feel like people exited to two is the one that like uh ksi would like pack ronaldo to yeah that's a really <laughs> niche niche reference and i'm sure lots of like 20 year old dudes will understand what i'm saying right now but uh packing something too is also yeah. like if you don't know what that means <laughs> yeah exactly no way to explain. Uh, my friends will be like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> All but, right. Yeah. Anyway. Want to lock in number one? I want to lock in number one. So I've got camera on you. Uh huh. Here we go. Thank you, Triple J. Thank you, Bryce and Ebony. I've had a great time. My song "You Against Yourself" is out today. Music video out today. Like and subscribe. Peace out. Wow, that was so good. Rule, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm pretty happy with that one. You nailed that. Um, like and subscribe.